What comes to your mind when you hear words like carnage, slaughter or massacre? In my case, it's predator, aliens, doom and crusader, no remorse. Screams of enemy soldiers running around on fire, shattered bodies all over the floor of a space station and horrible smell of burnt bodies inducing gag reflex. Well, I had to imagine the smell, but I reckon it smells horrible. Crusader No Remorse is another astonishing game forged in the depth of Origin systems by its division Loose Cannon Production. Origin have created most iconic games of 90s, Ultima series, Bioforged, Antwing Commander. Unfortunately, they went out of business long time ago. I may sound like an Origin fanboy. Yeah, I am. Crusader was released in 1995 for MS-DOS, followed by ports for Sony PlayStation and Sega Saturn in 1997. This time, Origin went for an action game instead of an RPG or an adventure game. They used slightly enhanced Ultima 8 isometric engine, which utilizes SVGA resolution and it looks amazing, considering the age of course. To fully enjoy the game, it needed faster hardware though, otherwise it looks something like this. It starts with a nicely done intro. Three elite soldiers in red combat suits, called silencers, are walking through the sewers. And you know what? Just watch the bloody thing, it's short. What the hell that? Oh man, we shouldn't have let them go. Shut up, Peter. They were civilians, not rebels. You keep making noise, the command will land. Did you see the shell casings? That wasn't a rebel ambush. Commander ordered the Metron unit to take out our train. Fire. They just stepped in. As you probably guessed, you are the soldier who didn't die. The game is set in the future, where an evil organization called World Economic Consortium, WEC for short, rules the world after economics went pear shaped. Dystopian or apocalyptic setting was quite popular in the 90s. WEC abuses all possible liberties, and people are suffering, which means there's to be a rebel organization that's trying to overthrow evil, globalist, communist conglomerate. And this is where you come in. An ex-WEC soldier who joins rebels to make a world a better place by killing and mutilating as many people as you can. I highly doubt anybody would play this game to enjoy this super elaborate story. Everyone bought this game just to enjoy endless killing, dismantling robots and blowing up enemy power plants. You used to work for WEC as a killing machine used to silence the resistance, hence the name Silencer. Since you just betrayed WEC and joined the rebels, nobody on the rebel side trusts you in the beginning. Everybody hates you, and is openly hostile towards you. Over the time, when you prove to be an important ally, this hostility withers and wanes until you are met with the respect you deserve. You'll be sent on 15 different missions, each in a different location, destroying military installations, huge factories or even space stations. You'll stand against human enemies, androids, huge robots and all kinds of traps. You'll be gathering valuable information, sabotaging power plants and assassinating WEC personnel. You can control your character with either keyboard, mouse, joystick or joypad. Since you can't reassign keys, you gotta get used to default settings. Unfortunately, using mouse and keyboard together is almost impossible. Sure, it's much faster to use mouse to turn around, but the problem is that some keys are assigned to a numeric pad, while others, like keys for jumping and running, 
or assigned to an opposite side of the keyboard. Whose idea was that? I don't know, but it was stupid. Controls are a bit dodgy and bloody inaccurate. Bumping into walls, missing the doors, falling into an acid leg or jumping and missing the target is quite frequent and annoying, so save your progress often to avoid being pissed off. As it was in all action games of the time, you've got two types of defense, health and shields. Some enemies and weapons projectiles are stopped by our shields, which get weaker and weaker after every hit. After you've got no shields, you start losing your health and I'm sure you know what happens when health bar reaches zero. However, some energy weapons can shoot through a shield and you lose your health no matter how much shields you've got. Silencer can carry lots of stuff in his backpack. It's like a mini version of TARDIS. He can fit the almost unlimited number of items, some even bigger than the backpack itself. But you can carry only 5 weapons at a time. There are lots of weapons to choose from. Simple guns, rifles, shotguns, rocket launchers, and laser and plasma rifles. And if that's not enough for you, you've got other toys like grenades, mines, time bombs, and my favorite, remote controlled spider bombs. How do I get better weapons and ammo, I hear you ask? Well, there are a couple of ways to get your gear. Either you can buy it on the rebel base from a bloke named Weasel, or you can find some in chests and lockers scattered around the missions. Or simply kill someone and loot his corpse, to make sure you can afford what Weasel is selling. Kill everyone, even scientists and workers, they always have a couple of credits on them. And don't pity them. They chose to work for an evil organization, so they got what was coming to them. If you've got enough ammo and feel like it, you can destroy almost anything in the environment around you. You can also use it to your advantage and kill an enemy hiding behind a barrel with toxic waste by blowing it up. Speaking about blowing things up, these bulls can replenish your health and shields, so don't destroy these, unless you depleted them dry. As I said in the beginning, graphics is astonishing for its time, and I like it even today. SVG resolution makes the game run a bit slower on lower end hardware, especially when it needs to handle some effects like people on fire. Isometric view is perfect for this sort of game. What may piss some people off though, is the way you move from screen to screen. Sometimes, when you cross the screen, you appear right in front of a camera or a cannon or just something that kills you right away. Other than that, I love it. Full motion videos with real actors were used in dialogues with other characters. Well, more like monologues, since the silencer never speaks, except for one particular situation. If you can call it speaking, that is. I'm not sure why it was so popular in the 90s, but these in-game videos were often interlaced, and it looks just awful. Sounds are simply brilliant. Sounds of explosions and screams. Gunshots, alarms or walking robots fit perfectly here and underline this dystopian atmosphere. Same goes for the music score that was composed by Andrew Sega and Dan Gardope. They did a cracking job. It's easily one of my all-time favorite game music. They didn't use MIDI files, but an engine made specifically for this game called Asylum Sound System, which uses module file format that sounds practically the same everywhere, so it's not dependent on an expensive MIDI sound card. But that doesn't mean the game doesn't need drivers for sound cards. First release supported only sound blasters and compatible sound cards. If you owned Gravis Ultrasound or Ensonic Soundscape, you had to wait for about a year for a patch with full support. So today, make sure you apply either sound card patch released by Origin, which adds support for these cards, or get a game version 1.23. If you're interested in the music score, check out the description. Playing Crusader once again after so many years brings back memories. What surprised me though was this. I had no idea there were secret rooms like this one, which I discovered by chance. I've got two new weapons and tons of other stuff. A sequel has been released, under the name Crusader No Regret. It was more like a standalone expansion pack than a sequel in my opinion. A real sequel was in development, but the game director left Origin, the development was halted and the game was never released. Two years after the first release, they came out with ports for PlayStation and Saturn. It had been handed over to another company that had to write the code from the scratch and due to hardware limitations, they had to cut some corners and it came out like this. They used only VGA resolution, less colors 
and the silencer moves like he's got something stuck in his ass. It's not the worst game I've ever seen, but it's a far cry from the original. On the other hand, full motion videos are not interlaced. If nothing else, this is some improvement. They also added new music and integrated forward roll from No Regret. Some of you may have noticed that the silencer looks a bit familiar. I'm not sure if I'm right, but it seems to me like they've got some inspiration in Star Wars and our Crusader is a Mandalorian ripoff. Crusader is a violent, gory, action-driven sci-fi perfection where you just pick up whatever weapon is at hand and shoot at everything and everyone that moves with absolutely no remorse. Give this game a try, you will certainly not regret that.